the Paint Diva. Today we're talking about 50 Shades of Grey. No, not the book. The paint colors. I'm a color consultant at a retailer that sells Benjamin Moore colors. Now in case your retailer doesn't have a color consultant, I'd like to help you today with choosing shades of gray. Now I personally have a love-hate relationship with this color. I love using it, I love decorating with it, but I hate what it does. It tends to never stay gray. It turns blue or purple or pink and it's all about the lighting. If you have a lot of shade trees around your home, it can tend to turn colors to green. Um, if you see colors in lamp light a lot, lamps can give off a pink cast and make your colors turn pink or purple. Now, let's talk about how to solve some gray problems. First of all, if you're choosing silvery grays, they tend to usually almost always turn blue. Anytime I want a soft blue, that's what I use, is, it is actually a shade of gray that turns blue. Let's talk about choosing the right shades of gray. I've narrowed it down to make this as easy as possible for you. Instead of coming into the store and being overwhelmed by all of the shades of gray, let's narrow this down right here to the historical colors. We're gonna pull out two strips. One, two. The perfect shade of gray for me, usually, for a silvery gray, is going to be this one right here, Stonington Gray. It's historical color number 170. It's not too light, it's not too dark, it tends to stay a pretty nice straight gray, and I use this as my measuring stick. Now, if you come over here, in the preview, here's your whole gray section, but most of these colors all look blue, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's pull out this one. Look what happens. You see how blue that looks? Okay, that's how you can tell. So feather gray to me is a beautiful soft blue, but I'm not gonna use it when I want gray. The first thing I like people to do is sample the Stonington gray. Put it up on the walls and see what happens. If it turns blue, since this is the straightest shade of gray, pretty much, this turns blue, then we need to move on from there and we need to move to a beigey gray. That's when I will move on to Revere Pewter. Revere Pewters, you're going to find this color all over the place in magazines and all over Howes and Pinterest. Okay, it's a great color. It's a beigey shade of gray. Now, the one problem that could happen is this sometimes has a slightly green undertone. So in a lot of shade, this color may be too green, but most of the time, this is a perfect beigey gray. Edgecomb gray is a little bit lighter. This is also one of my favorites. When we're done here today, we're gonna to go into a home that has these colors up in the house and you'll be able to see them. Let's narrow it down to three colors for the exterior. These were made specifically for the exterior. You have cliffside gray, platinum gray, and charcoal gray, okay? Light, medium, dark. When in doubt, stick with these. They were specifically made to go in on the exterior of your house. They were made to be gray. And yes, you can even use these on the inside if you want to. Now let's talk about where grays are in your Benjamin Moore dealer. In the classic collection, if you come all the way down here, here's a few shades of gray. Most of these will all turn blue-green. Okay, for instance, this one, Beach Glass, this is one of my favorite colors that reads blue-green gray. Here, when I put it there, you can see. Now these colors are beautiful together. I use these Almost every single day I will use these and this will read a soft blue next to your beigey gray. When we're here in the color preview section, again, these are all going to read blue. These grays up here, these are going to tend to read lavender. Over here in the affinity colors, this entire section over here is all of your grays. And if you're looking in the fan deck, it's all the way to the end, you can see your grays, these are a little bit purpley, okay? And then here's your silvery grays, but this one right here, it has more of a beigey tone. That's right here on the top, that's thunder. This one again, beigey gray, 
very similar to the Revere Pewter family. It's just a little bit darker, okay? These are some of my favorites. These are the ones we're gonna focus on today. And if you come over here, it comes in a big sheet as well. Great. Normally, on my little video blogs, I would show you photos of rooms that are painted in these colors, but today you're going to get a special treat. We're going to take a ride to the home of one of my clients, and we're going to go inside and we're going to see these colors up on the walls. Usually when I help people choose their paint colors, they'll ask me, oh, have you seen this color? Is it pretty? And I say yes. But today, I'm going to let you follow me in and come see the colors for yourself. We're in a center hall colonial, and this is my favorite color for an entry in a foyer in a center hall colonial. This is edgecone gray. What I love about it is it's a beigey gray, so it works with gray tones and beige tones, warm and cool, and it sort of marries all the colors together. And as you can see, it's light and soft and airy, and when you go upstairs, hallways tend to get a little bit dark, so this color still stays nice and light. And I love it. I think it looks great. Follow me over here to the living room. And this was the homeowner's idea, who uh, I think was very brave and took a risk, and I think it came out really great. This is a really dark chocolate brown. It's not a, not a gray, but it's still a neutral, and it's deep and dark and very rich, and I love it. And this one is... This color is French Press. It's one of the affinity colors. And it was done with the Aura paint because it's self-priming and it's very makes it much easier to paint a deep, dark color. So we're in center hall colonial. So that means you come in the middle, you got living room to the right, dining room to the left. I like balance. So since we've got this deep, rich, dark chocolate brown on the right, I want another deep color on the left. Now let's go back to talking about gray. In the dining room, we chose Chelsea Gray. It's one of the historical colors. Now gray, the problems with gray are that they always change color. They tend to, a silvery gray tends to almost always look blue. So the way to avoid that is by doing two things, to do a slightly beigey gray and to do a deeper, darker gray. This room is staying gray because it's a slightly beigey gray, almost even has a the historical colors have a hint of a greenish undertone. I don't think this room, this looks green at all. But another reason why I chose this color is to set off this rustic hutch behind us. And I think it looks great. Now come find, see one of my favorite colors. We're going into this kitchen. This is a brand new remodeled kitchen. It's gorgeous. We've got the Carrera marble on, on the countertops. We've got the white cabinets gray backsplash, and I chose one of my favorite grays of all time, Revere Pewter. Again, it's a beigey gray. It stays gray. It doesn't turn blue, in, and the beige in it keeps it nice and warm and inviting. And then this room is connected to the family room, which still has some of the older furniture in it, and that's why I like the Revere Pewter, because it, if people still have a lot of their beige era rooms and furniture, Revere Pewter goes great with beige, so you can still have some of your old things and start bringing in some new shades of gray into your house. An old man turned 98, he won the lottery and died the next day. It's a black fly in your Chardonnay. It's a death row pardon, two minutes too late, and isn't it ironic, don't you think? It's like gray. Mudroom, I love this. I saw in one house a deep dark gray in a mudroom. I became obsessed with it, and uh, ever since then, I love this look for mudrooms for a couple of reasons. It hides all the dirt, especially when we have kids and animals. Anything that splashes up against the wall or hits the walls, gray is going to hide everything. I love the neutrality of it. We pulled the color out of the tile on the floor, as you can see over here. And this color is Cinder. It's one of the affinity colors. Again, um, when you're going to do a deep, dark color like this, have it mixed in the aura because it's self-priming and it covers really well. So there's our, um, let's see, what are the four shades of gray? 
It's almost 50. Yes. <laughs> so most people think there's 50 shades of gray. Not in my mind. There's about <laughs> five or six. And these are some of the best ones. So I hope you love them. It's like rain.